panic attacks are getting more regular, Mr. Mahone. You should get help. They are not panic attacks. They're psychic crises. And I did get help. I made a fortune for someone to tell me I was suffering from Baradin's ass syndrome, a fear of making decisions, as if I didn't know that already. I just paid someone to have it christened. Why Baradin's ass? Clearly because I was sitting on the fence. Bit graphic, Mr. Mahone. Oh, I was divided, Ernest. Averroes would have understood. To half foot, all to half foot. The incoherence of the incoherence. As you can imagine, I felt lost. I can imagine. But why is ass? Was it unusual? Was it big or something? Oh, no, it certainly wasn't big. It was it was scrawny. The burden never talked about it, but his detractors did. They used it to ridicule him, to ridicule his ideas. Berardin, the great nominalist philosopher who acknowledged no other authority but that of reason. Oh, that Berardin. His enemies, his philosophical enemies, ascribed to him the bizarre metaphor of the ass who starved to death because it couldn't decide between which of two equal and equidistant bales of hay from which to eat. Do you see how no other image hits the spot? I do now. Mm. But have you decided to do anything? And become a taxidermist, for instance? Oh, I was born a taxidermist, Ernest. <laughs> no, no choice there. Besides, Vernon's ass only rears its ugly head when the decision has some kind of emotional import. For me, it first started with a, a tragic experience with a turbo. A turbo? Yes. You mean a fish? Yes. Rhombus Maximus, the warty titan of the deep. You were emotionally involved? Yes. <laughs> Although not directly. Oh, I was going out with a woman named Frida Moxley who bred the turbo. Frida the turbo breeder. Yes. <laughs> now, she wasn't just a turbo breeder, Ernest. She was a very attractive woman. Slinking among the breeding tanks in a snug fitting lab coat. <laughs> Her feline form re refracted and magnified odd infinitum. There were freedoms everywhere. <laughs> and nothing but the rhythmic hydraulic hump to, to soothe one's pounding heart. No one before her had managed to breed the turbo in Aquaria, and I, I think that's what impressed me most of all about her. Quite a turn on, Mr. Mahone. <laughs> <laughs> you know something, Ernest? A turbo can only become sexually active when under pressure. Strange, because usually that's the last thing you need. <laughs> Not for deep secrets. <clears throat> Turbo need a pressure of eight atmospheres. That's 120 pounds per square inch before the males can discharge their milt. Their what? Their milt, their life-giving substance. Oh, 120 <laughs> pounds per square inch? It must appear at quite a speed, Mr. Mahone. <laughs> <laughs> They're kept in specially reinforced tanks. <laughs> And one day, while I was making some minor adjustments to the water pressure, helping out in Frida's lab, uh, her breathing tank exploded, and a huge female turbo came charging out right at me. You were turbocharged! <laughs> well, it was a distressing experience, Ernest. Here I was, lying on the ground, floundering, as it were, <laughs> and spilt milk. <laughs> one of the two turbo went on a gravid in captivity. And that's when it hit me. What did? Verdon's ass. Oh. Lying on top of me, gasped the, the, the result of, of 15 years of scientific research. While on the other side of the room, lay the un unconscious form of Frida, whom to save. You were going to ignore Frida and save the fish? It was a feckin' turbo, Ernest. A genuine dilemma. So what did you do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And Frida? Uh, she eventually came to and staggered off. I was never to see her again. <laughs> she faded into scientific oblivion, her career forever blighted by a morbid fear of pressure pumps. 